Alright, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Roblox tutorial. So last time I told you guys how to create a beautiful pet. Now, we're going to be working on a data store tutorial, and this is a very basic data store tutorial for you guys. I'm going to be explaining what uh, these different functions do and what they, how they can help you. So anyways, let's go ahead and ri head right into it. So let's go into Service Script Service and insert a script. We're going to name this a data store controller. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in for you guys so you guys can see. Uh, zoom out a bit. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and press Control A and delete. We're going to create a new local variable. And this local variable is going to be called data store. Now, uh, what this is going to be doing is it's going to access the data store service. Now, if I go ahead and we're already in output here, but if I go into a game, uh, if I go ahead and put in the command prompt uh, for IV and pairs, right here it's going to print out a few um, it's going to print out a few services and children of the game so we have workspace which is right here and we have nothing else we can see we have run service stats content provider and GUI root and there's a lot more but content provider is um, one of the services that we can use to get all the content that is actually being used like decals so anyways, we're going to go ahead and do game, get service, and this one, instead of run service, get service, uh, gets the service so we can use it later on. And then we're going to get data store service. So here we go. Now we're going to go ahead and act, uh, we're going to act, we're going to locate one of our own data stores. So we're going to do local. Let's go ahead, data store one. So data ds1 equals data store get data store. And then inside these brackets, we're going to go ahead and put, uh, we're going to go ahead and do example data store. Now, this right here is not accessing a already existing data store. Uh, right now, we're creating a new one. So example data store is the name of the data store that we want. And since it's not in, it needs to exist before it can be used. So since this does not exist, uh, instead of actually getting it at first, it's going to create it and then it's going to get the data store. So you can name this whatever you want for recording uh, purposes or tutorial purposes. I'm going to name them example data store. Now we're going to go ahead and do some interesting stuff with it. So first let's go ahead and do a added connect function. And then inside these brackets we're going to go put player and we're going to press and enter to for it to create an end. And I'm already expecting you guys to know what this is right here because, you know, it's data store. And I've explained this in my other tutorials that use uh, the connect function. So if you guys want to go ahead and go to those ones, uh, you can. But I'm going to explain it here as well. So what player's the player added does is that it will call off this event uh, to a connected function whenever a player is added to the game. And it will do it to only that player if you make it do that. Which this is why this player variable is here. Anyways, so what we're going to do is we're going to do local instance, uh, whoops, actually, no, local uh, leader equals instance dot new, and I spelled that wrong, instance dot new, connect, oh, whoops, not connect, sorry, I'm, I'm saying a lot of things that I do not know what I'm doing. So instance dot new. And we're going to put this in the player. And this is going to be a folder. And the reason why we're doing a folder instead of a model for leader stats is because now models are usually used for parts and folders are used for variables. I, I just think folders are neater. So now we're going to do go ahead and do local. Actually, no, we're going to do leader.name equals leader stats. So it will display in the leader board. And we're going to do local. And we're going to go ahead and make a variable. So we'll go ahead and do, uh, we'll do like, let's see, what's a good, uh, we'll do bricks equals, and we're going to go ahead and add on to this. We're going to do local bricks equals instance dot new int value 
and we're gonna put this in the leader, and then bricks dot uh, bricks dot name equals bricks bricks dot value equals, and what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and get a, a get an async from my data store. And you usually use this to get values from a player whose uh, data was saved into that data store. So uh, let me explain what uh, get async does. Get async basically um, what happens is that once it's called, so let's go ahead and put DS1. I'll uh, explain on the way. So DS1, we're accessing our first data store. Now we're gonna go and do colon uh, colon get async. And now what this does is that in these brackets we're gonna uh, we're going to define the player's user ID and it's going to look into that data store for the player's user ID uh, assigned with the value that was saved with it. So in these brackets we all we have to do is player dot user ID. That's all you have to do and uh, pretty simple. So right here, yeah, get async from the data store, and we're going to look for the player user ID because that's when you save data to the data store using the player user ID. That's what it saves it with. So you can easily access it. And then we're going to go ahead, and uh, I think that's it. So if we actually, um, actually, no, and after this, we're going to do or zero. So basically, um, it this will be set to zero if... Um, if uh, this does not bring back anything. So if we go ahead and press play, we should see in the leader stats that we see bricks and it's equal to zero because we have nothing. So that's actually quite nice. And as you can see, we have this now here. So now we have uh, our bricks here. So if we go ahead and go back into the data store controller, let's add a few more things to this. So we're going to go ahead and do ds1 set async. And this one's actually pretty neat as well. What this does is that this is a saving function to bringing uh, your data from the player or the variable or whatever uh, tables into uh, the player's data store save. So we're going to go ahead and put in here uh, ds1 set async. And in this are going to be two uh, variables that we're going to put in or two, uh, two constraints or anything that we need to put in uh, to constants. We're going to need to put in the player user ID like the last one. So we're going to do player.user ID. Or if you wanted it to save to one person, then you would do their user ID. And then comma, and then you're going to do the value. So we're going to go ahead and do bricks dot value. And what does that what that does is that it's going to be okay. Uh, we're going to want to set the async of this player of this player in the data store to the value that we need, and that's exactly what's going on here. So if we go ahead and press play, uh, it already sets it right away, so it's zero. So if we set this to like five. Actually, it's on player GUIs and leader stats bricks. If we change the value to 5, halt process, and press play again. You can see when we go back here, it's going to be 0. So, uh, what are we going to do to change that? Pretty simple. And that's player join. That's another script that was in the past tutorial. But here we go. We have bricks value set async. So we set the async of the uh, player to 0. Because now there's something here, it's going to be grabbing zero every time, and instead of just setting it to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do so bricks dot changed connect function enter. What dot change does is basically it will uh, it will trigger a connect uh, event to whatever it's connecting. Uh, the changed event to um, whenever a whenever a value has been changed of a parent like so int value that if the value changes it'll call off that connect. So now what we're going to do here is that we're going to go ahead and set the async. So we're going to actually do this first. Um, so what we're going to do is print 
we're going to print here and we're going to go ahead and put in here or the print we're going to go ahead and print here uh what is it what do, what should i print um saving data there we go and we're going to go ahead and set the async of the exact same thing here and then we're going to do print uh saved uh we're going to do let's go ahead and put uh, in here, uh, another one of these, and it's going to be player dot user ID. Whoops, uh, dot user ID, and we're going to go ahead and put. Actually, I don't think that's going to work. No, it's not. So we're going to go ahead and do player dot user ID dot dot, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and put an S there, and whoops. Uh, we can't actually do that. How? Do, how? Oh, okay. Here we go. And then uh, there, or actually not this. We're not going to go ahead and put in that. We're going to go ahead and do that. There we go. That's uh, better. So now what we're going to do here is uh, data, data of, and then here we're going to go ahead and do dot of, and we're going to get the brick, bricks dot value, dot dot of um and then we're going to go ahead and do dot dot put a uh, space there sorry if i i keep going like a bit slower and trying to remember uh what i kind of want to do so then we're going to do bricks dot name uh and then we're going to dot dot the uh, quote here has been saved so if we go ahead and press play you'll see that we're not going to get the print. So right here, no print has been uh, saved there. But if we go ahead and go to leader stats and change this to like 50, it's going to say uh, our user ID, which I'm going to change the name, uh, data of 50 bricks has been saved. So there we go. So now we know that we've been saved. I'm going to change this to name really quickly. So now if we go ahead and press play again, you guys will see that we're going to have 50 bricks saved. So there we go. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, what happens if uh what happens if we leave the game and it doesn't save right away? Well, what we're going to do is that we're going to go ahead and in here we're going to change that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do uh or this will be a separate function as well so we're, it's going to be game dot players dot player removing and we're going to do connect all right sorry about that so we're going to do connect function enter and we're going to put player in here and we're going to take this right here but instead, we're going to go ahead and do uh, player dot leader stats uh, dot bricks, and there we go. Now it will save, and we're going to the, do the exact same thing we did here. So now, if we go ahead and go here and change this to that. There should be no more errors, and we are going to get rid of that S there. So there we go. We have print saving data, player data there. And now if we go ahead and press play, we still have 50. And if we go ahead and press player, uh, leader stats bricks, and change this to 70, uh, player one stat of 70 bricks has been saved. And if we press whole process, it says saving data. And it didn't have time to print the rest. But it did print the rest if we go ahead and do a test server. Now we're going to go ahead and do something for everybody. So we're going to do for, uh, two different ways. We can do four IV in pairs. And this, and actually before we, I continue here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to add five uh, bricks to the player's total every one second. So we can do this for IV, uh, actually while wait one do for IV in pairs game dot players get children do v dot leader stats dot bricks dot uh, whoops uh, dot value 
equals and we can go ahead and do that and plus one and that does work as you can see if we go ahead and press play when we there we go and it increases by one every one second and we're gonna go ahead and make it so it increases by five every one second but we don't have to do it that way and actually I have a better way of doing that so what we're going to do is we're gonna comment out these if you want to use it like this way then you can it's uh, useful for other ways but instead here we're gonna do on the player added while wait one and then we're gonna do and we're gonna go ahead and do bricks dot value equals bricks dot value plus one actually plus five and this is actually a lot shorter than that if we go ahead and press play it does the exact same thing so there we go saving data saving data and the reason why it doesn't print the rest is because it going it's going every one second it doesn't even have time so yeah see look it uh, barely has time it does it like every what six seven uh, probably around seven so let's go ahead and actually do something here so we're gonna go ahead and insert a into the base plate and this will be a click detector and this is all right so once you input the click detector into the base plate, what you're going to want to do is go back to data store controller. And right here, we're going to go ahead and do uh, a script in here in the base plate. Insert object script. And you can put this in anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and put it here. So we're going to name this script um, add brick script or add brick, whatever you would like to call it. And we're going to go ahead and do script dot parent dot click detector dot uh, I'm pretty sure it's like dot mouse uh, mouse click connect uh, connect function player and then enter and ho and this is basically what this does is that we're able to uh, go ahead and uh, change uh, a way of how we're going to uh, do this so what I, what basically what it does is that we're going to uh, it goes ahead and uh, it changes uh, what we have. So it's once you click it, it will activate the connect function, and we're going to go ahead and do player dot leader stats, and actually player is who clicked. I'm pretty sure it gets the exact player. I huh. It might be the exact player, I believe. So if we go ahead and do player dot leader stats dot bricks dot value equals and we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing here, plus one. And this will be plus one for every time they click. I believe this is how that works. Yeah, here we go. And then it adjusts and you can keep clicking the base plate for it to keep growing. So anyways, uh, you'll keep getting this error, but uh, right now it's request limit exceeded on set. So uh, it will keep growing, but you reach a exceeded limit, which can be bypassed. But for now, it's uh, it's going to just say that you requested a exceeded on limit on on set. So it's 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 processing all this these different changes still. And it's going to, it's right now you're sending too much data at the same time. So it kind of, it it's a bit too fast for the actual thing. But I hope this is uh, good enough for you guys. I kind of worked hard getting this ready for you guys. And I'm sorry I have screwed up my schedule the past two weeks. There has been family stuff going on. And I promise next week there should be a video out by Saturday 7 a.m. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this and if this helped you out and if you, if you learn more about Data Store and how these things work, then go ahead and leave a like and drop down a comment if you have any troubles. And anyways, I want to say thank you guys for all the support my channel's been blowing up. Uh, so anyways, thank you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.